morning everyone i hope uh, all of you can hear me if someone can confirm whether you can hear me or and also uh, see the screen that would be appreciated yes we can hear you and see the screen okay great thank you so much all right okay um, so yeah, we will be doing our class online. So our topic for today will be integration by substitution still, but I'm gonna tackle more of a um, medium level and hard level integration by substitution questions. Okay, so I think we did like three or four basic level questions last week, and um, we're gonna wrap up integration by substitution lesson today, and then tomorrow we will be uh, doing starting a new lesson integration by parts. Okay, right. So uh, actually there were a couple of problems in the handout that I couldn't finish, okay? In the last handout that I gave you. Um, so I'm gonna write the questions here, okay? So one of the questions was x cubed over x to the four minus five. So, this is a problem that was in the last handout, okay, that I didn't um, do in class. So I'm gonna do this today, right? So um, integration by substitution, let's recall. So I said in integration by substitution, we, uh, the first step that we need to do is to identify a suitable substitute. What's your U going to be? So that's the thing that we need to do here, right? So decide a U. Now, when you're deciding a U, I told you that it's helpful to look at the function that you're integrating and try to identify an inside function, a function that's inside another function, okay? So in all the examples that I did last time, so if I remember correctly, let's list some. So I remember we did two X cosine X square, dx, we integrated this, and then we had x e to the x square plus one. This is another problem that we did in class. And also we did um, cosine t one plus sine t. I think we did this in the class, okay? Right, so in all of them, an inside function, choosing an inside function was hopefully clear, okay? So if you look at here, so this is inside cosine, so that's, the inside function, a function inside another function. Here, this is the inside function. Inside E, we have another function, x square plus one. So inside the square root, we have one plus sine t. So that was our inside function, right? Okay. Now, um, if you look at this problem, thinking about an inside function, it seems to be like a tricky thing. That's it, it, at least, if you look at this, it seems like there's no clear inside function in this problem for us to choose for you, okay? Right, in this case, if it is not obvious, we have another thing that we can uh, use to decide over you. The other thing is um, not only an inside function, but the, another thing is that if you look at, so here I choose this one to be, these, these were our choices for you. But here's something else look at the relationship between u and the functions outside, okay? So look at the functions that I highlight from green here. Look at the relationship, x square and two x, two x is the derivative of x square, okay? So we can see in our first problem, we have the derivative of the inside function outside somewhere else, okay, right. So let's look at here. What's the derivative of x squared plus one? Well, it's two x, we have x, we have kind of derivative. We are off by a constant, okay? That means two is not there, but still we can say kind of we have the derivative, okay? It is okay to off by a constant or a sign, okay? That's fine, all right. So now let's look at this. What's the derivative of one plus sine? The derivative of sine is cosine. Oh yeah, we have cosine. So now you can see we have this relationship in all these three cases. The derivative of our choice for u is somewhere else in the integral, okay? Now, why this is important? Because check this out. So in the first problem, we learned that when we choose u x, uh, x square as u, 
if we take the derivative, because we are gonna anyway take the derivative in integration by substitution, right? Because we wanna change dx to du, that's what we learn, right? So when you change, when you find dx, when you do the cross multiplication, dx is du over two x, the importance of having the derivative of the inside function is that now can you see this two x and this two x, they are gonna cancel, okay? That derivative is gonna get canceled. You're gonna simplify it, okay? That's why it's a big characteristic of an integration by substitution problem where when you choose your u, when you choose your substitute, you have to check whether its derivative is somewhere else in the integral or not, because you want this cancellation to happen, okay? You want this to happen in 99% of the problems, okay? Right, so now let's keep that in mind, okay? So when it comes to this problem, now it seems like, uh, it seems like we do not have a, an inside function to choose, that's okay. Now, the next thing that you can do is, you can try to think about a choice for a u. You can think about, okay, any function, any part here. And then the next thing you wanna do is, you wanna check whether it's derivative is somewhere else in the integral. If that's the case, then, for, then your choice for u is correct and you can use integration by substitution, okay? Now, Think about a term that you can choose in this integral when, where when you choose it, its derivative is also somewhere else, maybe off by a constant or a sign, that's okay. But at least part of the derivative is there, then um, you can do substitution. So think about, think about yourself uh, within yourself for like 10 seconds and uh, write down a choice for you. I, I, I don't see your faces or anything, so this is not going to, not going to be like an in-class experience. So uh, we'll work with what we have. So uh, do, do it by yourself, honestly. So write down a choice for you, okay? And then we'll compare uh, with what I have. I want you to uh, think, okay? All right. Um, okay, so let's, okay. Um, so here's my choice for you. Okay, so let's compare. So my choice for you in this problem is going to be, I'm going to write it here because it's a little bit messy in that side. So I'm, my choice for you is X to the four. Okay, so uh, why X to the four? Because remember uh, what I said, Check the derivative. What's the derivative of x to the four? It's four x cubed, right? Do we have four x cubed somewhere else in the integral? Not exactly four x cubed, but at least we have x cubed, right? Remember I said we can off by a constant. Great. So x to the four can be a great choice for, um, for our u. But I'm gonna modify it a little bit. So x to the four is just a part of the term, right? The entire term x a is x to the four minus five. Why don't I just take the entire thing to make my life easy, remember? Okay, I said you have, if you're choosing a, 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 a substitute, try to think about the terms bonded with that your substitute, try to take the entire term, okay? So I'm gonna choose x to the four minus five because the derivative of five is anyway gonna be zero. So you'll be able to replace this entire chunk by u rather than replacing just x to the four by u, okay? So uh, the replacing the entire thing by u is better, okay? Right, so now let's do the substitution. So what I want, so the special thing about this example is that if, so when you, when you want to solve an integral, if an inside function is not clear, think about the other thing. Think about the terms in, in that function that you can choose for u and try to find the derivative of it, write it in the scratch paper, and then see if, if the derivative is somewhere else in the integral, okay? If that's the case, then you can use integration by substitution, okay? Right, so now let's do the substitution. So we have to take the derivative because we wanna change dx to du. So the derivative here we discussed, that's 4x cubed. So from here, I take dx to the right, 4x cubed to the left. So it's du over 4x cubed equal to dx. 
Okay, so these are the tools that we need to do the substitution. All right, so let's do it. So it's, you will see it's an easy problem to do after you figure out the substitution. So we have x cubed. Now, x to the 4 minus 5, that entire thing is u. And du is what? Uh, excuse me, dx is du over 4x cubed. Okay, so I use it here. Right, now you can see x cubed that cancel out. That's what I was talking about, okay? So this, you were able to cancel because you choose a u so that it has its derivative somewhere else in the integral. That's why you were able to cancel, okay? Simplify. So what we have after simplification is numerator is one and denominator, it seems like it's for you, do you? Now we learned last week, basic integration techniques. How do we integrate this? We can take one fourth out of the integral. So it's just one over u, right? And I hope you remember how to integrate one over u or one over x. It's natural log absolute u, right? Plus c. Remember we learned integral of one over x is natural log absolute x. So now we just need to replace u back by what's u? x to the four minus five, so absolute x to the four minus one. Okay, right, so that's the solution. Okay, so when you choose the correct u, uh, actually this is an easy problem, okay? Right, but it's different from the problems that we solved before in terms of choosing u, okay? Right, so uh, yeah, we are doing the class online, but if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them, okay? You're not interrupting me. If you have any questions, you can put your questions down in the chat box. That's fine. Uh, you can ask the questions publicly in the chat box or just send a message just to me. Um, if you wanna be uh, anonymous from your friends, that's, that's fine, I understand it. Or if you want, you can unmute and ask the question as well. You will be not interrupting me, okay? I'll be happy if you ask questions, okay? Right. Okay, then I'll move on to the second problem. So let's look at a new problem. Okay, so this one is going to be a little bit easy. Um, here's my problem. Sine natural log x over x dx. Okay, so uh, this is also a problem in the last handout, I think. Okay, I think this is, the, uh, this is the last problem that I couldn't solve in the handout. In the last handout that I gave you, I think the question one is just a list of integrals asking whether you can apply the integration by substitution or not. Try to do that exercise by yourself at home, okay? You don't have to solve the integrals. Just try to see if you can use integration by substitution or not. Now you have the tool set to do that, okay? So think first see whether you have an inside function or not. If you don't have an inside function, see if the derivative relationship is there. If not, yeah, then you can't use integration by substitution, okay? So uh, do that exercise one by yourself. We, we are gonna, we are gonna touch on that after we do integration by parts, okay? We're gonna have a discussion how to choose a proper technique on a given problem, okay? Right, all right, so here's the new problem. Now let's choose a u, okay? So do we have an inside function? So here, hopefully, it's kind of clear because if you look at the numerator inside sign, I have natural log, right? So inside sign, you have another function. So yeah, there is an inside function. So let's choose u to be natural log x. That's inside function. That's what you have inside sign, okay? Now, not only that, remember now we have to have the derivative relationship, right? So if you take the derivative of natural log, what do you get? So think about this. If you integrate one over X, you get natural log X, excuse me. So if you differentiate, that means if you go back, you're gonna get one over X, right? Okay, so if you differentiate natural log X, you're gonna get one over X. 
okay so remember that relationship okay if you integrate one of x you get natural log x so back it works other way around too so if you differentiate uh, other way around means if you differentiate natural log x you're gonna get one of x okay right so now we need dx take dx to the right okay and x to the left but x is on the bottom so if you take it to the left it will go to the numerator okay so this is going to be x du equal to dx all right so hopefully that's clear because dx is on the denominator so if you take it to the right it's going to go to top cross multiplication okay bottom to top and then x is on the bottom on the right so if you take it to the left bottom to top okay so it'll go to top right now we have everything we need so this is going to be sine ln x is u over x dx is x du right so now you can see again x cancel out x goes away again it makes sense because when we choose our u it's derivative one over x see it's somewhere else in the integral you you should be able to see that relationship okay so we have our u and its derivative is one over x is it somewhere else in the integral absolutely yes because this is not just x it's on the bottom it's one over x right so you can think this integral as one over x times sine ln x same thing right okay right that's why this works so well now we just need to integrate sine you see it's e easy now if you integrate sine u you're going to get negative cosine u plus c okay so then it's negative what's u u is natural log x that's it okay Right, so again, when you choose your u properly, um, the rest is, it turned out to be an easy problem. All right, so I'll give you a few seconds. Um, I'll pause for a few seconds um, so that I, uh, I can answer any questions if you have any questions, okay? Okay, seems to be like no questions. If you have, again, feel free to um, ask them, okay? Right, all right, so I'm gonna move on to the third problem. So uh, third problem, this, is, this will be, uh, I'm doing this just to help you out with homework, this Wednesday homework. So here's the problem, x ln x to the 12. Right, so, now, um, okay, it seems like I have a question. So first of all, let me look at, may you please pull up just a tiny bit? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right, I think now you can see both. Okay. So um, new problem. Um, no worries. Um, so here's what I want you to do. In the new problem, in question three, um, by yourself, write down what you think is the U, okay? Because I can see you're doing a mistake. So uh, think about your choice for U, okay? I want everyone to do it. Look at the function that you're integrating and uh, write down a choice for you, okay? I'll give you... 20 seconds actually this one is a little bit tricky so it's not only to think think about this so when you're choosing u it's not only just inside function you have to check whether the derivative the relationship related to the derivative should also be there okay so the your choice for you when you make a choice for you its derivative should somewhere else be in the integral okay it can be off by a constant that's fine but um yeah okay 
Okay, finalize a choice. Okay, I will, um, I'll start. Okay, so let's compare. So some of you might have chosen x to the 12 as your u. Now let's think through this. x to the 12, yes, it's an inside function. I agree. It's inside natural log, right? Usually we think about natural log x. Now instead of natural log x, we have natural log x to the 12. So inside natural log, you have x to the 12. So yeah, yeah, it's a composite function. So it's it's an inside function. But the question is, what's the derivative of x to the 12? It's 12 x to the 11. Is it somewhere else in the integral? It's not, right? So this is a problem, okay? If you think about this, 12, okay, we can forgive if we don't have 12 because it's a constant multiple. I said that you can be off by a constant. That's fine, okay? But what we have is actually x, right? Not x to the 11, that's a big difference. It's right, x and x to the 11, it's a big difference, totally different, okay? So we don't have the derivative somewhere else in the integral, okay? So really here your choice for you, okay? It's, it's actually wrong, all right? So we have to make another choice. Uh, so this one is a tricky problem because uh, you need some tools from pre-calculus. So that's why I'm helping you a bit um, here with this problem, okay? So um, um, here we need to use a logarithmic property. So think about this. If you have a ln a to the b, okay? Um, Think about another way that you can write, it. okay? Um, so ln a to the b, you can actually write it. You can take the exponent and put it in front of natural log, okay? So this is a logarithmic property, okay? Uh, yeah, so this is something that, yeah, you learn in pre-calc or calc one classes, depending on where you take it, okay? So a logarithmic property. So you can take that B outside the natural log, okay? Right, so that's a way to simplify, okay? So here, before integrate, I'm gonna simplify this problem. How? So see the exponent is 12, right? So I'm gonna take it out, put it in front of natural log here, but it looks ugly. It will look like X12 ln X. Uh, this is ugly, so I'm gonna write it as 2LX, that's better, okay? So it's 2LX natural log X, okay? Right, so I did some simplification here, okay? Right, now what's our choice for you? Again, now the other, now the thing here is now you have, uh, now that we have simplified the function, uh, we don't have an inside function, right? We had an inside function, you simplified it, now it's gone, okay? So, right, so what's our choice for you here? Think about the, think about again, when you're choosing a U, if you wanna do it by substitution, uh, if you don't have a clear inside function, what you can do is think about a part of what you integrate and try to pick a part of a function where its derivative is also somewhere else in the integral. Okay, and we can do that actually here. Uh, isn't uh, ln x to the, no. So yeah, so I have a question. I get a question, let's see. Yeah, everyone can see the question. Okay, so someone asked me, um, ln x to the 12, is the same as ln x to the 12? No, it's not. Okay, so this is the correct relationship. So ln x to the 12 is actually 12 times ln x, okay? All right, so yeah, the, this comes of uh, uh, using a logarithmic property. We can't take the 12 out and take it as the power of the entire ln x, okay? Right, so um, yeah, uh, but that's a good question. Uh, so here, Think about the choice for you, where when you choose it, um, you can see the derivative 
Yeah, no problem. Derivative somewhere else. Okay. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, most of you can see it. So I'm going to choose u to be natural log x. Why? Think about its derivative. What's the derivative of natural log x? It's one over x. I think we discussed it here too, right? We used it in the previous problem too. Derivative of natural log is one over x. Is one over x somewhere else? Absolutely yes, right? What do I have here? You have x in the denominator, which means it's one over x. Well, it's one over 12x technically, but 12 doesn't matter, right? If you have a fire constant, if you have if you're missing a constant, if you have an additional constant that's multiplied, that's fine, okay? We can, we can deal with that 12 later, right? So yes, that's why ln x as u will work here, okay? So let's see. Uh, so I'm gonna kick dx to the right, x to the left. So it's x du equal to dx, okay? So let's do the substitution. dx is x du. Here to LX, natural log is actually U, right? Okay, now you can see X cancel out. Why? Again, we choose a U so that we're gonna have that cancellation. We chose a U so that its derivative is also somewhere else in the integral. okay? But to get there, we had to do some logarithmic uh, simplification. So this is going to be X cancel out. What do we have? DU over 12U. Now I'm gonna take that one over 12 out of the integral. So it's one over U DU, right? I mean, you can take DU, you can push, push it a little bit and you know write it like this. Okay, it's the same thing. DU over U and one over U times DU is the same thing, okay? So this is going to be one over 12. If you integrate one over u, now we know it's natural log absolute u plus c. So this is going to be one over 12 natural log u, what's our choice for you? What did you choose? Ln x, oh, okay. So it's natural log, natural log x. Okay, plus c. That's a weird one, but yeah. All right, so that's the solution to that problem. Okay, so that's a that that's a little bit tricky one. That's a tricky one because the, you need the uh, you need that logarithmic property. Okay. Um, so I am gonna move on to a new problem. Let's see, um, I'm gonna do, sine x times cosine x, cosine x minus three dx. Okay, that's my new problem. Now, what I want you to do by yourself, take 20 seconds and think about a U, okay? Think about a choice for uh, you. This is good exercise, okay? So if you make a, if you made a mistake, um, then that's fantastic. Then you can learn something, okay? You can learn from mistakes, all right? This one is also a little bit tricky, okay? Uh, to choose you.
All right. I hope you had the chance and I hope you had the chance to write down the stuff from the previous problem too. So if you, yeah, if you still need to see it, uh, let me know. Okay. I can scroll and show it to you. All right. Um, so choice for you. Okay. Now, um, so there's a, there's, there's, so here there are two choices. Okay. So there's a lazy choice. And then there's a choice that you make careful. I think the lazy choice uh, is that um, to choose sine x as your u because derivative of sine is cosine and you know, uh, one might think, oh, okay, that's nice. So that's, that's, that's going to be my um, u. But let's see, okay, maybe you have uh, um, written sine x as your choice for u. It's not gonna work here, okay? So yes, the derivative sign is cosine and it's there. You have to think, okay, will we able to cancel it out? So, um, so dx is going to be du over cosine, right? So let's see. So sine x is u, cosine x, cosine x minus three, dx is du over cosine x, okay. So then I'm going to cancel cosine. Okay, so one cosine cancel, but what's left is u over cosine x minus three. Now this is wrong, right? Why? I said when you do the substitution and all that, you should have an integral just in terms of u, not x, not mixed variables. Okay, not x and u both. It must be just u. Now, we were not able to cancel this cosine through this relation C, okay? That tells you that this is a wrong choice for your U, okay? Right, so don't fall into that trap. So you have to, be, you have to think a little bit, okay? Right, so, um, so that's not gonna work out. Now we need to think about a new choice, okay? So I'm gonna erase this stuff because that's actually raw, right? Okay, so if you thought that sine x is your u, it's not, okay? So that's why I said you have to think little ahead, okay, in these type of problems, right? Now, what's another choice for you, okay? So if you think about this, derivative cosine is sine, right? As derivative sine is cosine, derivative cosine is sine. I mean, negative sine, negative doesn't matter. We, we can handle uh, negatives, right? So if I'm gonna choose cosine to be my u, okay? So the derivative of, excuse me, cosine is negative sine. So dx is du over negative sine. Right, so now if, if I do the substitution, so this is sine, cosine is u, okay? And cosine is again u, right, okay? And then dx is du over minus sine x. So sine cancel out, nice. Okay, so we have uh, an integral u over u minus three to integrate, okay? Right, so uh, now here, uh, if you think about this now, integrating u over u minus three is not also obvious, okay? So this is one of those hard problems, okay? I'm doing a, a, a hard integration by substitution problem, okay? Um, where you have to think, uh, think a little bit here, okay? So, u over u minus c, that's also not easy to integrate, okay? So uh, you have to use special tricks, but, um, but before we go in there, before we do that, there's another way that you can get an easier, um, easier integral in this step, okay? There's a better choice for you, okay? I want you to think about it. Okay, just a small change to this U, you're gonna have a much better U, okay? Think about this, okay? Um, 
So if you look at carefully, my choice for you is cosine. And I mean, it works, okay? Don't get me wrong, it works. It, it cancel out the sign, it's really nice. You wrote the integral just in terms of u. It's just, we can change this u little bit and uh, make our life easy. Think about this. So here we have cosine, here we have cosine x minus three, right? So can't I just take cosine x minus three to be u? I can, right? Okay. So I'm gonna take, take not just cosine, but cosine x minus three to be my u. So it makes our life really easy, uh, better because the derivative of cosine is still negative sine, derivative of three, it's gone, right? So it's not gonna even matter when you take the derivative, right? So this is still the same, right? So it's only what we're writing here in terms of u is gonna change, okay? So let's see. Now, sine x, that cancel out. Now, uh, cosine x minus three is u. So that's your u. The entire thing. So that's why I told you, like last in 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 last week, and also today in the beginning of the class, when you're choosing for you, uh, try to take those entire terms as you. Okay, not just part of function. If there's a possibility to take the entire chunk, especially with like plus or minus constants. If you have plus or minus constants, try to take that entire entire chunk because in when you're taking the derivative it's not going to even matter derivative of constants it's zero right okay now what's cosine right so cosine x minus three is u then what's cosine think about this if if u is cosine x minus three from here we can say well u is cosine x minus three what is cosine x it's u plus three right that's also another trick that that's handy. Okay, see, you can change the substitute, move stuff in the substitute a bit. You can take this three to the left and it's cosine X is U plus three, okay? Right, so what we are gonna get is minus U plus three over U to integrate. And we know how to integrate this, okay? So minus because of this minus, okay, so minus, how do we integrate? Remember I told you, I taught you a trick. When you have a simpler denominator, you can divide each term in the numerator by the denominator. So it's u over u plus three over u. I can write it like that. Divide u by u, divide three by u. Okay, so u over u, it's one. So it's one plus three over u du. So it's minus, if you integrate one, you're gonna get u, right? If you integrate three over u, you're gonna get three natural log absolute u plus c. Okay, so this is going to be minus u is what? Cosine x minus three, that's our u, plus three natural log absolute cosine x minus three plus c. All right, so this is our solution. So we, 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 we have moved into tiny, you know, slightly challenging problems, okay? Right, so this one is, there, there are a few things that you need to learn from this particular problem. The first thing, the first big lesson is the, it's see how powerful it is to include the entire thing, like the, to, to include plus or minus constants as part of your U. Okay, yes, you can choose u to be cosine x, but it would be better if you can have those, if you have constants added or subtracted, include them also in your u. Okay, that's the biggest lesson that you can learn from here. All right, remember just like in the first day I, I solved a problem e to the x square plus one. And remember I told you, don't just take x square to be u, take that plus one too. Okay, because it's not gonna, it's, it's gonna help you with simplification when you're substitution that, substituting that plus one not gonna matter. The derivative of one is zero.
Okay, so it's gonna make your life easy, easier. So same thing here. Okay, the next biggest lesson here is that if there are terms, so sometimes, sometimes you have to change your substitute, move things in your substitute a bit to write certain terms in terms of u. Okay, right. Here we said u is cosine x minus three, but at some part of the integral, I want to just cosine. Okay, so if u is cosine x minus three, cosine x is u plus three. You just need to move stuff in the substitute, okay? Right, so I'm gonna do a, a similar problem, okay? So um, this, is, this is another very good problem. Um, x cubed square root x square plus one. It looks easy, but uh, we had to use a trick here. Okay, so choice for you. Well, we have a clear inside function, right? Inside this square root, we have x square plus 21. So I'm gonna take that as my u. Okay, right. So if you think about this, if I take the derivative, because I asked you to think about this as well, when you take the derivative, you have to ask the question, is that derivative somewhere else in the integral? Okay, that's important, all right? So the derivative of x squared is two x, derivative of 21 is zero. Again, again, oh yeah, yeah, again, check. I took the entire thing to be my u, not just x squared, okay? Right, now, 2x, is it somewhere else in the integral? Well, two doesn't matter. Constant multiples, they don't matter. Is x somewhere else in the integral? Yeah, we have x, but we have excess stuff, right? We have more than what we need, okay? So let's see what's gonna happen here, okay? So I'm gonna find dx, so I'm gonna kick dx to the right, 2x to the left, so it's du over 2x. So dx is du over 2x. Right, so let's do the substitute. So it's x cubed, x squared plus 21 is u, so I don't need this big square root, a small one will be sufficient. dx is du over 2x. Now, if we cancel this, yes, we can cancel one x, but what we're gonna have is x square square root u over two. Right? Now I said, no, now this is a problem, remember? Because we can't have integral that's in terms of both x and u. Once you do that simplification, you should get something just in terms of u. Now, before we jump into the conclusion that, okay, so then my u is wrong, is there something else that we can do to fix this problem? Think about it. We're gonna use a trick from the last problem, okay? So if you, if you look carefully, the problem here is x square, right? If I can write, if I can write x square in terms of u, then everything is going to be good. And look at the substitute, right? What is x square? Remember in the last problem we learned, we can switch stuff, not switch, move stuff, move stuff around the substitute if you need that help, okay, right? So see, if u is x square plus 21, I can take 21 to the left. So u minus 21 is x square, right? Really x square is u minus 21. So then I can replace x square by u minus 21. So u minus 21 times square root u over two is du. Now you have the entire integral in terms of u. Okay, so this trick is important. All right, so this usually happens when you have stuff, uh, excess stuff. If you have excess terms other than the derivative in the integral, like you have x, you, what you want is two x in the integral, somewhere else in the integral so that we can do the cancellation. I mean x, but we have more than x, we have x cubed, okay? But 
if you have stuff more than stuff that you need well you can maybe you will be able to fix it by moving around this stuff in the substitute now if you can't do that then that means your u is wrong perhaps uh, you have to use a different u or a different technique okay right so now how do we solve this integral now we can foil right so we can write this as u square root 2 minus 21 square root 2 i can multiply all the terms by square root u take half out okay so i can further simplify this so it's u to the one square root u is u to the half 21 u to the half d so this is u to the one times u to the half so the base is same. So if you're multiplying, remember I said you can add the exponents. So you can write this as one times half minus 21 u to the half. Here you don't have to do anything. Okay, it's, it's good there. It's good to go. You just need to integrate there. So here this is half u to the half, one plus half is three over two. All right, now you can integrate. Okay, so I simplified this term so that we get a term that's easy to integrate right away. Okay, so what do we get? Half u to the three half, if I integrate, it's u to the three half plus one over three half plus one minus 21 u to the one half plus one, one half plus one plus c. I added one to the exponent and divide by that number. Right, so this is, let's do the simplification. Three half plus one is going to be five half. So u to the five half, divide by five half minus 21 u to the three half divided by three half plus c. Okay, so now this is dividing by five half is same as multiplying by two over five u to the five half minus 21 dividing by three half is same as multiplying by two thirds. So u to the three over two plus c. All right, we learned this stuff last time, right? So two over five. Okay, what's my u? What did I choose for u? u x squared plus 21, okay. So u is x squared plus 21, five half, so three and 21 cancel out and you're gonna get seven, right? Three times seven is 21. So seven times two is 14. So 14, u is x squared plus 21, three half plus. All right, folks, this is the solution for the problem. Okay, so this one is a real, a real tricky one, okay? Um, I consider it to be a hard integration by substitution problem for you okay because you are learning this for the first time um and it yeah it develops through the through experience okay i just didn't want to do only simple problems in the class i also wanted to show you different variations of uh, uh of the of the what of the multiverse of uh, integration by substitution okay so uh different tricks that you have to used to solve integration by substitution uh, problems. But yeah, so that's what I was planning to do today. So if you, are, uh, if you are confused about anything, just feel free to um, ask questions. You can stay five minutes and I'll, I'll stay extra five minutes in the Zoom meeting. You can ask questions if you have. Otherwise, um, you can meet me during my office hours today. So today I will have office hours from uh, three to five, but I will be not in on campus, okay? Um, I'm not getting out of the house. So uh, uh, so you can I, as you can send me an email, okay? So if you wanna meet me today, just send me an email, then I'll send you a Zoom link and we can meet, okay? So just shoot me an email between three to five if you wanna meet me, okay? All right, otherwise uh, I'll see you tomorrow.